wig testing can be so expensive. For the longest, I was making complete, full nine ounce candles to see how they perform. Wrong. <laughs> Then I found a method to test wicks using only one vessel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Okay guys, we are now in my candle studio. If you haven't seen the tour, I wanna say just click this link right here, it'll take you straight to it. So what we're gonna do next is go through all of the supplies you're gonna need. I need a picture. So, I'm using a matte black pouring pitcher I got from the Wood & Wick Co. They're super great, they last really long, they're very durable. I would say get one of these, they're super cheap too on their site. And I'll link them down below. You're gonna need a little vest, a little container to hold your fragrance oil because you do have to measure out a certain amount and you can't just take it straight from the bottle, it has to go into a container. Here is the fragrance oil we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using cashmere and vanilla. I hope you guys can see that. And I would definitely recommend getting spouts like this. You see what I'm saying? These spouts are really good for you just pouring a certain amount instead of just dumping it in there and it definitely gives you an exact pour. Next, you're gonna need a vessel. I'm using the 9.5 ounce Libby Clear glass jars. I'll link them down below. I want to test out this cashmere vanilla fragrance in the wax and see how it performs with all different wicks. So that's why we're using these because we're gonna be launching these next, yes. With my Dream Vessels tins, the diameter is much larger than my Libby jars from Candle Science. So I'm eager to see if that means that we need to wick down or wick up because these are CD10 wicks in here. That leads me to my next point. You're gonna need a crap little wicks, okay? <laughs> so first, I wanted to test out tried and true the cd10 wicks these perform really well with coconut wax so i wanted to see how they perform with coconut wax in my libby vessels we're also going to wick down to see just in case the cd10s do not perform well we're going to try the cd9s and then i got these three different types of hpsps just to see how they perform with the wax because like i said we're using a coconut wax and i heard that hpsps work really well with them especially in smaller jars so we'll just see how that works what we're looking for is the the flame activity if it's wick if it's flying all over the place we don't want that and then we're definitely checking for that hot throw we want to make sure we have a strong hot throw with the wicks and a lot of times you'll think oh my god my candle's not smelling too good or it's not smelling too strong and it could be your wick so today we're going to definitely investigate that all right, the next thing we're gonna need is a scale. I purchased this scale on Amazon and I'll link it down below. Then you're gonna need a stirrer to stir in your fragrance, but also I use this to cut the, the wax because I found great success with this, cutting the wax into little cubes. And you'll need a thermometer. You can measure the temperature of your wax and make sure it's at the proper boiling point for your wax. And last but not least, you're gonna need your wax. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> a huge chunk to smell out. Yeah, so I use cocoa apricot cream. It's amazing, tried and true. It definitely gives me a great hot girl smooth top. Those two things are not an issue. My main thing that I'm focusing on is how these wicks perform with this wax in this jar. Because you guys, we are scientists. Everything counts. It has to be all in sync. Perfect wicks that work with the perfect jars and the perfect wax, the perfect fragrance oil, and the perfect temperatures. You gotta get it right. Get it right, get it tight. <laughs> and then just as an optional thing, I add in some alcohol and a little spray bottle just for cleanup, okay? And to melt the wax, we're just gonna use a small two quart boiling pot and then a burner here. And we're gonna do the double burning method here where you just put in the pitcher inside of the water. Number one tip for that is just to put a very little bit of water in there. You see? You don't need it to fill up because what's gonna happen is it's gonna bubble up like crazy. You're gonna get this 
intense splashback that we don't want. Definitely stay tuned. If you do like videos like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on anything else that I post. All right, let's just get right into it. Okay guys, as you can see here, I'm just making sure my scale's all set and I'm gonna go ahead and put on some gloves and then make sure that the burner is doing good as well as add in 8.5 ounces of wax. After adding in 8.5 ounces of wax, I went ahead and just took that pouring pitcher and added it into the boiling water. And as you can see, it's really good that I put less water because it's bubbling pretty rapidly. So it's better to avoid splash by putting a less, lesser amount of water. So yeah, next we're just gonna go ahead and measure out the fragrance oil. Like I said before, we're doing 0.9 ounces of fragrance oil because that works best for me. As you can see here, the temperature got up to 188 and that's where we want it in the 185 to 190 range. So now we can go ahead and remove it from the burner and add it to this nice little towel here and then immediately add in the fragrance oil. So I just want to show you all here that I use my Apple Watch to set an, an alarm for about two minutes. That way I'll know when it's fully two minutes of mixing in that fragrance oil.
Once the timer is done, we immediately pour the wax into the vessel. There is no wick because we are doing a very cool method, which I'll show you soon, of testing out different sizes. Two hours later. Now for the fun part, we're going to be using the CD10 wigs. Yes. So yes, here is the wig and my wig trimmers. And then we're also going to be using a drill bit. Yes, you only need the drill bit. You don't need the entire tool. You'll just drill in a hole deep enough for a two hour long burn. So yes, we're just going to do that right here. Okay, here now we're just going to go ahead and trim that wig down just about to four inches. That way it'll give us enough room just to wiggle that into the wax and be able to burn it for two hours. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Two hours later. So here we're just going to go ahead and carefully pull out that wick using our wick trimmers and make sure that the wax solidifies before we move on to the CD9. Okay guys, it's the next day and the wax is solidified, so we're back with the same process. Carefully drilling a small hole and then adding in the wicks for testing. In this one, we're gonna be doing the CD9s. Thank <laughs> you. 
two hours later. Alright, so the same process as before here, I'm just going to blow out that candle and carefully remove the CD9 wick and wait for this vessel, the wax to solidify so that we can add in our next wick. Alright guys, so we're going to be using the HPSP size 57. Just wanted to see how these perform with our cocoa apricot cream wax in our Libby jars. So yeah, just the same process as we did with the other two. Just carefully drilling in a hole and then adding in that wick. Two hours later. Okay guys, I loved it. Honestly, overall, looking at them, I think I'm gonna have to go with the CD10s. It was amazing, they performed really well. This very consistent burn, an amazing hot throw, and didn't do like that flickering thing that the HPs did, which I noticed. So I'm super excited just to move forward with the CD10s, not the CD9s, because the CD9s did give me a little flickering, which showed me that, you know, it's probably too small for the jar, which is perfectly fine. This was such a cool experiment. I'm so glad I get to show you guys exactly how to do this. I mean, all you need is a little drill, or if you have like a needle that you can just make a very small hole inside of the wax with it's perfect it's very easy I learned this trick from Jeffrey I learned this trick from Stanley handcrafted I'll link them down below as well super great trick it definitely is effective when you don't want to make a thousand candles to test out wicks you just want to test it out using one candle so i hope you all enjoyed this video if you did go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on anything else that i post all right i hope you enjoy the rest of your day your week your hour just live in your moment and love life okay bye